Oh, there hey, he is. There he I just is. haven't spoken yet, dog. I'm like the word of God out this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you will hear me when I speak. <laughs> I feel like if we like broke it down and asked Chronic Jarvis like in the future, like he could, I think Cody has the most intros for the show. I would say like it usually starts with Cody's voice. That's like not even on purpose. It's just Cody's usually the guy's like, "Hey, hey, boys, how you doing, boy?" Like you know, I like that you give me a slight twang. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do like not all the time. You but mean you the do. most intros is in like Welcome to Comics and Chronic or like who says? No, that's true. definitely no, Jake. No, that's you, obviously. Yeah. I just mean like the episode literally starts with the sound of my voice. voice. So, like the sound of music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hills are alive. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because that's exactly what we're talking about today. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the sound of music episode. <laughs> Doing a Sound of Music episode would be hilarious. <laughs> I actually uh, was in a, uh, a camp, summer camp rendition of The Sound of Music. Uh, what? I played the, who I played were the, you? Who I was you? the father, Von Trapp, my dude. Nice. Yeah, you already I can see you as Von Trapp. <laughs> dude, I did a lot of musical theater growing up. Von Trapp. Old Von Treasy. Von Treasy. Von, Tr- Von Trey, as we call him. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how old were you when you played him? I was like, Honestly, like eleven, I think. What? Yeah. Leading man, <laughs> leading Jake. man, that dude. I was, I was the father in Sound of Music. I played um, Bernardo in West Side Story. He's the leader of the Sharks. He's Maria's brother. The one who gets, I get killed. I get stabbed. Nice, just like in your future. Yeah, I played Judd in Oklahoma. Dude, Judd, I love Oklahoma. Judd, who, who also famously gets it. Judd, he was like the dudes, like Lenny of Mice and Men type character. Yeah. And you said he famously gets he gets stabbed too. He gets killed also. He gets killed in the barn. He gets stabbed. Yeah. Damn. Spoiler warning for Oklahoma in this episode. Yeah, dude. I was in a bunch of shit. I was in Guys and Dolls. Nice. In both of the productions I was in, I died. (laughs) Yeah, see? Real ones die. (laughs) (laughs) As a kid, I as a kid, I was very shy. Like I didn't want to act in any way like me doing stand-up was like me breaking out of my shell and like you know aci helped yeah. me do that but like as a kid um maybe i had like one or two speaking lines oh i mean you're you're way more out of your shell you're way more out of your shell now than when i first met you for sure oh yeah it took a lot of um weed and psychedelics and just <laughs> literally like but really just actually doing the fucking thing you know like just going on stage in front of my friends and family really so, so you had never really like performed until ACI? Uh, yeah, yeah. Damn, that's crazy. I'd, I'd, I'd been a performer. Like I said, as a kid, like in school, just like a one or two throwaway lines in the school play, but nothing crazy. Oh, no. I was leading man status for a good few plays. <laughs> I regret it. You know, I think I would probably, like, I, 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 it took me a long time to understand how to like, I'm not saying I'm a good actor. Like I'm not trying to be out here thinking like, Oh, you know, like, but I think I could pull it off. You know, like I think I've gotten better and understood it. Like ACI, we always shit on it, but I don't know. I think it, it taught me a lot. Anthony Iannaccio, the next, uh, Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> <laughs> because I grew up like doing theater and had already liked being on the stage. I think that's like what helped me to like want to try stand up. Because I, n- I never had any like qualms about being on stage in front of people. You have a natural stage presence, I would say, Jake. Thank you. <laughs> you will. See, I hadn't, I didn't really either. I, but I think it was just like my being homeschooled and stuff uh, really made me crave attention. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I really wanted attention. <laughs> it's a problem. 
<laughs> I mean, in some way, we all want attention, or else we yeah, never would have done like stand up in any way, or or do this. Like, we wouldn't be doing a podcast every single week if we wanted zero. We want attention. Listen to us. Listen to us. We're great. We need it. Yeah, we're the best. Yeah, we're great. <laughs> we the best. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that was the perfect time to do the air horn. Oh, <laughs> away. Yeah, dude, but that you dropped the ball there. Yeah, I wasn't ready. I wasn't you gotta ready. Be on fuck, those air fuck, horns. fuck, fuck. Anthony. I want to see the full extent of the soundboard this episode. <laughs> yeah. this, is the, this is the most soundboard needed episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. High octane. <laughs> yeah. Damn, I wish I had something that was like, vroom, vroom. I <laughs> fuck. I mean,. <laughs> I mean feck Ooh, feck fecking uh, which brings us to today's topic welcome to comics and chronic I'm Jacob H I'm with Cody Cannon Anthony Arnaccio and today we are talking a banshees of in Sheeran <laughs> directed yeah. and written by Martin McDonough starring Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson in case for those of you listening who don't know that trio? They also did the movie in Bruges, which I only saw for the first time, I, like a few weeks ago. Which I'm glad I did. That was a fucking awesome movie. That's insane, dude! It's you a said banger. you just saw it for the first time a few weeks ago. Oh, Crazy. Yeah, like I always knew it was a good movie, but um, our boy Sean was um, so at my bachelor party. Like we had ate a bunch of shroom chocolates, and it was like I don't know, like one or two in the morning. And Sean's like, "Yo, let's watch in Bruges. What Have you ever fuck? seen it?" <laughs> 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 if I was tripping shrooms and somebody suggested to, to watch Bruges? it in Bruges, I'd be like, nah. Oh, I loved it. I uh, loved it. But I, I didn't watch it. the whole thing. I was like, I need to, yeah, I needed to like eject from it after a little while. But like then I, I restarted the movie and finished it not on shrooms a couple weeks ago and fucking, fucking loved it. So I was so excited that you guys were like, let's do an episode for this one. Yeah, dude, this movie rules. So they've done another movie too, right? It wasn't yeah, just- they did another one. I forget what they what it was called. I don't. I didn't see it honestly. But is it Seven Psychopath? Is it that one? I didn't see that one. I don't think they were in that together. Yeah, I think Martin McDonough might have. He also did surprisingly three billboards. I don't. I didn't, I didn't, see, didn't that see that one, that. but he did that movie. I watched. I watched three billboards. It was super there. Um, nah. no, I mean, it wasn't bad. And I it just. I I, might, I. I honestly could probably give it another stand. Like stand another watch. I was a. Uh, with some company and uh, <laughs> they couldn't hold our attention. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is on Scott Hot and Heavy. <laughs> 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 That's the sound my dick makes when I come. <laughs> From now on, anytime you hear that in an episode, you know that. If I'm ever coming happen. on fertile ground, that's the made the that's noise that was. <laughs> that's the noise that was made when Kaya was conceived. <laughs> <laughs> on fertile ground. <laughs> <laughs> And if oh, you've been sick. listening to every single episode, this is the sound you hear when you find out uh, how many inches C- Cody could take if someone's trying to peg him. <laughs> 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 oh, dude, that last one really killed me in the Avatar episode. <laughs> 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 that show's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not here for the sound effects. We're yeah, not. Here we're not that. here today. We are here to talk this. What I thought was a really fucking awesome film. Yeah, the Banshees of Inisherin. Easily top three of the year for me. I think for me, yeah, top three. If not, I'm really debating. Is it numero uno for me? It might be. Wow. The only one that might be beating it is something that say. we already covered. Everything, yep. everywhere, that's all at what, once. That's what I was going to say. The only thing that rivals this is everything, everywhere, all at once. And the only actor, in my opinion, I haven't seen the whale, so I actually can't speak to that. Though I've heard it's amazing. He's amazing. Brenda Fraser. Oh, yeah, I want to see that. Uh, Key Kwan. I really liked Colin Farrell in this movie. I thought he fucking murdered. Killed him. Like, killed. yeah, murdered. Like, I watched it and I was like, damn, like, dude, that's a good actor. He's a good actor. Dude, they took such a silly idea and made it, like, so extreme. And but real. Like, you're right. It starts yeah. off silly. But, dude, like, I don't know, man. I thought this movie had, like, really deep themes and tones. And no, I, it's inc- I'm not- kind of, like, incredibly depressing at moments. <laughs> 
I'm not at moments. Yeah, the, the whole movie. <laughs> no, is so I agree. I agree with you guys completely. I wasn't saying silly in a way that discredits it. I mean, silly. No. Like if you tell somebody the plot of a dude it won't be left alone, so he threatens to cut his finger off every day until somebody until his ex best friend leaves him alone. You would be like, oh, that's a silly movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I don't think it's wrong to call it silly. I mean, these movies, like even in Bruce. It's 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 funny. There's like a, even yeah. though it's really dark, it's funny and it's meant. To, I mean, life is funny that way, you know. Like it's it is funny that you know. How do you stop? Like it's a social faux pas. Like you can't just you you can't just be like we're not friends anymore. I'm I'm I'm, I'm not talking to you. Like it, it's it's just like you don't just stop talking I to think, someone. I think like, we, we should, should normalize doing that. I think that's the whole that's <laughs> the whole point of the movie, man. If someone doesn't want to be friends with anyone anymore, do you really have to force them? They but have. in like LA and New York City, that's way that's super easy. But like if you're on this island where like you know everybody and you can't get away from anyone, yeah, where there's like 20 people, or or in West Virginia, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I didn't say West Virginia. Yeah, um, I feel like we should give a synopsis for people that haven't seen it. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're going into it <laughs> really fast. All right. Well, pretty much it takes place on an island off of Ireland called Inishiden. Or I don't know if that's the island or the city, but anyways. That's the lake. Yeah, the lake. And it's 1923. Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson are friends, but then one day Brendan Gleeson decides to turn it off. Or turn it off. <laughs> decides to <laughs> turn it off. Stop being a friend with <laughs> Colin Farrell's character, who is like kind of like oafish and dumb and like doesn't really dull. Dull is the word yeah, they dull use throughout the, the movie. Yeah, like he just doesn't have any highbrow commentary about anything. <laughs> and so Brendan Gleeson decides he doesn't want to be friends anymore, but not, not even like a mean way. Like it was harsh, but even he's like, I'm just done. He's like, I don't, I just don't want to be friends. He's not even like, fuck you or nothing. But and Colin Farrell will not leave him alone. So Brendan Gleeson threatens to cut off a finger every time Colin Farrell's character talks to him. From there, you can which he does. It's no does. bluff. No, he does not bluff. Yeah, and then it, dude, it's wild. What it gets extreme. It gets quick. hardcore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. Um, fucking. Everybody's performances. The sister, sister was uh, great, dude. Shabon, she was the awesome. two lead actors. Shabon. Um, what was that? Simple kid, Brian Keegan. He played Dominic. Dominic. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot Brian Keegan's in it yeah. too. Shout out to him. Yep. Two actors from the Batman who, like, when you guys were saying best movies of 2022, Ed, that still might hold the top spot for me. I don't care that it's a, a Batman movie. Like, Whoa. you know, Wait, it could still be number you think, one. You think Batman's better than everything, everywhere, all at once? And yeah. this? Oh, yeah. Whoa, nice. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I like your I like your take. I don't know if either of those would be in my top three <gasps> either, but not, I, not this movie is not in my top three, no, but that doesn't mean... That doesn't mean anything. That, it's just no. That's well, I want to hear, hear your top three, Anthony. I do, yeah, I want to hear your top three also. I have to think about it. It's not. I'll. I'll. It has just, to happen at the end of the episode. You got to wait for it because I got to okay, think about okay, it. Okay. 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 Batman not even might not even really be number one, but I know it's. I liked it more than this, and I like Colin Farrell's performance more in the Batman. But I'm not trying to take away from. Whoa! Me. Crazy <laughs> takes. Colin Farrell is just very normal in this. Like, he's great at it. He's great. Like, I believe he's the dullest guy in the world, and he's Colin Farrell at the same time, you know? Like, he's just so good. Whoa. <coughs> Did somebody say cut? Because you have crazy takes right now, Anthony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. This is Anthony's, Hot Take Friday night. This is yeah. Hot Take Friday. Jesus. Yeah, Anthony's coming in. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, hot take fried dude. Hot takis, bro. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> now I'm bringing the hot Cheetos and takis. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus if Christ. You get that reference, hit me I, up. I do get that reference. It's the rap song <laughs> with the kids on the playground. Hot Cheetos yeah. and Takis. Hot Cheetos and yeah, Takis. <laughs> <laughs> that song gets stuck in my head all the time. <laughs> um, damn. Well, sorry, Cody. I feel like you were going to say something. No, those were just some wild takes, but I support them. You're allowed <laughs> to be wildly opinionated, but. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Wildly. Yeah, dude. I'm glad I have permission. That being said, I kind of figured Jake and I would be on the same page as far as those both being two of our three best films of the year. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm kind of surprised that you even watched it, Cody. But then you're surprised Cody watched it. Yeah, I guess I don't know. 
because I almost didn't watch it. I like I watched it the weekend it came out. The weekend it came, it was put on HBO. Oh, okay. I was at home with Ko. I remember like not really seeing much of a trailer, so I wasn't too intrigued to just go see it. I actually watched it without the trailer. I just heard all the hubbub, and uh, I was at home with Ko, and it was the kind of thing where like uh, my stepdad was about to watch some like fucking w- shitty Western show from like the fifties or some shit, Jesus Christ. like Bonanza <laughs> or something. And, <laughs> and, uh, he was about to, so I had to pick Bananas. something. So I had to pick something quick to put on and I had just smoked a bowl. So I just like threw it on, on a whim. Like it was like <laughs> I, when I popped up HBO, it was like one of the, it was like maybe I think the first or second of the home screen. You know what I mean? Hmm. And I threw that bad boy on and honestly for like the first couple minutes, uh, like maybe like four or five at most though, uh, I was like kind of dicking around on my phone and just like whatever. But right away I got sucked in and was just like, holy shit, this movie that's about Mm. almost nothing is one of the best movies of the year. Mm. I disagree that it's about nothing though. No, I mean like not in the theme. Like it's about themes and uh, like how people act and react and um, you know what I mean? Like it's uh, I think, I think it's like got a lot of deep meaning, but like plot wise, it's the kind of thing. It's a character driven movie for yeah. sure. It's like, like there's a, it's like, and it's a slow burn, but yeah. somehow not slow at all. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. It's not like a slowly paced, like it doesn't drag or lag at all. Yeah. The pacing's actually great. Like it, it, it does hook you in and it's like, and it's, it, yeah. And, and, and even those quieter parts, you're getting those beautiful shots of Ireland. Holy shit. The scenery made me want to come. That opening, clearly like a helicopter or drone shot. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I gotta be quicker with this. That, that opening, uh, that opening shot of like, you know, you see all the squares and the greenness of the island. That was fucking yes, dude. And even like their village, like which was like obviously like for sure a real place. I was like, dude, this is sick. I want to go there. Yeah, I want to go there too. Honestly, yeah, it looked fucking amazing. Like it was beautifully shot. Every time they sh- they showed like the lakes or him looking out in the ocean it was really cool. Yeah, I'd argue cinematography wise the most beautiful movie of the year by a long shot. Mm-hmm. I think maybe like the only comparable one would be Avatar, and I think this is more beautiful because it's not it's real computer it's not genera- CGI, genera- yeah. yeah yeah ooh yeah no I I, like uh, I was hooked from like pretty early on like even. At first, I was like, is this going to be a slow movie? Because it opens with those women singing Gaelic. Yeah. And, all, and then, yeah, just like, dude, I also, I just had, a, I loved that, like, the whole movie takes place pretty much around, like, the pub. Yeah. Cause, which is the only social center to go in the whole village. Yeah, because it takes place, doesn't it take place during the British Revolution or something like that? Nin- during the Irish Civil Nin- War. Irish, yeah, Irish Civil War. Yeah, that's what it was. I only know it's 1923 yeah. because in the scene where Colin Farrell is looking at his calendar, the year says 1923. Yeah. But I thought it was interesting that they said it during the Irish Civil War. It's like these two guys are like having their own little, you know, civil war. It's like their own civil war. And it's funny because at, at the beginning of the movie, it is, it does feel like, okay, this is going to be way more silly and way more of a comedy. And as the movie goes on, it's like bit by bit getting more somber, more real. More real. The whole part about Dominic and his father, who's the like asshole cop, yeah, who molests him. Like, there's no copaganda in this movie, folks. You know what I'm saying? Like, his father sucks, and like, and he molests him. He molests him. He beats him. Um, beats him. Yeah. But I still don't think that's why. I mean, I, the, my interpretation of like, so at the end, skipping to the end, if you guys don't mind, like Dominic's fate. Right, I think he committed yeah. suicide. He committed suicide, but I think it's because the girl turned him down. Ooh, see, I don't think it's that. Yeah. I w- I think it's because he when he's talking to um, so Co- Colin Farrell's character is Parik, Podrick, yeah, and uh the other guy is Calm, Calm, and and so Colin Calm Fa- some Larry, yeah, and and Colin Farrell's character. So he's talking to Dominic Barry Keegan, and he's like telling him how he's like, oh, you know, one of the fiddle players. I told him his mom. 
um, or his dad got into uh, got hit by a bus or something or a delivery truck. So he had to leave. So he couldn't be. And he had to leave. And he's like, oh man, that's how my mom died. And it's like, it's fucked up. And he, like, Colin Farrell thinks he's like, you know, it's giving him character because he's not dull anymore. And he thinks, you know, but it's not a nice thing. And he knows it. And he tells it to Dominic. And Dominic's a, a bit simple, but it breaks him. And I feel like that's why he kills himself because he's like, you're, that was a, not a nice thing to do. He's like, there, you know, you were the niceness in the world. And now. Yeah. He's, he always said, he said, you were the nice one. He's like, now you're just like everyone else. He's exactly. He's like, he's and like, that's, that's the last time we see him. He says, he's like, that's one of the meanest things I've ever like heard. Yeah, he says yeah, that. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, that's cool. That's a cool take. I mean, I don't know if I would give it up to that being like strictly it. I mean, obviously that dude has that dude. Aside from being like relatively simple, uh, he wasn't. He wasn't though. What do you mean by that? This the scene where they have where he's spending the night at uh, at Podrick's and Siobhan's place, and uh-huh. they're having a talk, and you know the sister doesn't want him there. Dude, you kind of like you get to see that like he might even be smarter than Colin Farrell's character because she, the sister says oh. something and he goes touche and Colin Farrell's character he goes what <laughs> he's like and Brian Keegan says Brian Keegan says touche he's like it's French for like he just know he knows he is more cultured and educated than fucking so like his he's True. simple in a, in in a different way but but I, 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 he's simple he's simple he's okay so he's like book smart but he's not. People, he's not. He doesn't have people skills. Yeah, like Colin Farrell isn't stupid, like dull. Meaning, like he he isn't cultured. Like he doesn't know anything outside of his very small part of life. Yeah, yeah. He has nothing to add to like the the like you know. He just kind of lives a sad normal. Like it's not. It's kind of sad. Like you learn like him and his sister are in a pretty sad situation. Yeah, I love the character of the sister too. You know, like you you root for her. God, I love her. She was great. I want to marry her. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, she was, Cody and she was cool. She was pretty. Whoever that actress is. I think I've seen her in something, but yeah, she, I, I couldn't recognize, like I couldn't figure out what movie I'd seen her in, but I have seen her in something. Yeah, she was cool. I also liked it. It seemed like, um, it seemed like Podrick also at, like acted very young. Like they obviously lost their parents. We don't know how, but it feels like from whatever that point was, Con Farrell's character never really grew up beyond that point. And mm-hmm. in fact, in like psychology, like people tend to stay at the age they experience trauma at. Mm. That's why I'm going to be why young Cody's forever. As as he is. Yeah. <laughs> 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 forever young. And like throughout the, throughout the movie, like Con Farrell's character is almost, especially like compared to Brendan Gleeson's character, way more childish, you know? Yeah. Way more oafish. Like he has to like, he has, he talks to him like he's a child. He's like, he's like, He's like, Podrick, please, like, what do I have to do? I'm just asking you to leave me alone. Right. And like a fucking needy kid pulling on an adult's jacket, like he just will not stop. Yeah. And he thinks it's kind of like a goof. Yeah, like, nah, goof. come he on. He says, he goes, oh, I realized yesterday was April 1st. He's like, fool's day. And he thought, he thought maybe yeah. Brendan Gleeson's character was joking when he said, I don't want to be your friend anymore. So that's what I mean. He like he's a child in a way, and he's like mm. selfish enough to like not take it at face value. Exactly. Like even because even, of his limited yeah. ability to be when he was mean in the pub when he's all shit faced and he's finally being mean to Brendan uh, Brendan Gleeson's character and Brendan Gleeson says, "Wow," he's like, "I think that's the first time I ever liked him." <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> honestly, it's so fucked up. Scene, it's so fucked up, but it's also that scene is fucking great. Yeah, yeah, I love that scene. This is a this is a well you're right it's a character driven movie like yeah like it's the, beautiful it, 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 it's actors who, like deliver tenfold on what makes this movie so good oh yeah if you for ima- sure imagine if it had been like Chris Pratt in the lead you know oh my <laughs> I mean, god yeah. that would, I would give it six Joe Pesci's of course <laughs> <laughs> this is Chris Pratt uh, so going back to like what like the movie the plot of the movie right like Brendan Gleeson is just like I don't want to be friends with you anymore. Have you guys ever done that to someone? Just like ghosted someone or tried to ghost someone? You're just like, I'm done with this person. For no reason, just like, I'm done. If I'm being honest, I actually have done it recently. Ooh. Yeah, a couple times. I feel like in in many ways, me and Cody are the... The Comsum Larry and Podrick of the podcast. <laughs> that brings me to my next Because <laughs> when I was watching it, I was like, oh, this kind of feels like like when we had our little beef right before your wedding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, literally while watching it, I was like, this kind of reminds me of me and Cody. <laughs> but in your mind, who was who? We know who was who. <laughs> 
We know. I mean, yeah, Cody's not wrong. We all know. <laughs> we all know. <laughs> I'm the fucking simple one. <laughs> the, the, the one that's like too childish, you know? <laughs> I'm Compson Larry. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Anthony, who would you be? Dominic. I thought about this. I, I, so it's e- it's either Dominic or or it's one other character. Okay, let me take a guess. I say <laughs> Dominic's jo- dad. <laughs> no, oh, no. I'm not the f- cop. <laughs> you killed me. <laughs> He's I like that, that time out. You said, ew, dude, I'm not a fucking cop. Knowing full well that his character is also a rapist and a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> All those things are true. Uh, but the cop thing is the one that got to you. Disgusting. Hell yeah. I would say, okay, yeah, you're either Dominic or I honestly think maybe John Joe, the, the owner of the pub. Ooh, that's that's kind of cool. Because John Joe was a mediator between the two. Right. But know who's the real mediator between the two? The, the dog. <laughs> oh. No, the dog. That's the only one. They both that they both like the dog. Colin Farrell didn't kill the dog. It like kind of Dude, I felt so bad for that fucking donkey. Yeah. Jenny. Jenny. Jenny, best character of the movie. Dude, also talk about character driven. Jenny was a great character. Jenny. Honestly. Also, I gotta say Seriously, no, the I donkey. agree. I would say like his relationship with the donkey, that's like also like look at what you're saying. Like anyone listening right now, like who's seeing it, like what a relationship with the donkey, but like when you watch the movie, it's way deeper than we're you know, we're able to convey right now. Yeah. But he there's a great line in the movie where the sister is like, Can you get the fucking donkey out of the house? And He's, he's like, I need the donkey in the house, but I'm sad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like some people have like therapy dogs. It's like his therapy dog. Yeah, exactly. Some people have little, yeah, the dog. He has his fucking donkey. And then, dude, by the end of it, he lets the horse in. He lets the cow in, like when the sister yeah. leaves. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude, he's spiraling. I do yeah. like going back to the dog. He loses everything. He loses everything. It sucks for he him loses for everything. no reason. No, that's not true. In a deeper context, the reason is that he's unable to grow as a person. Yeah, Siobhan sees how stagnant her life would be on that tiny ass island and goes to make more money, even invites him in the letter to live with her, and he refuses to do so. Right. He stays on the island. He, like, he has chosen to not move on. And he even chose, in the last conversation he has with uh, Compton Larry, he chooses, like, this feud is kind of like, this is our forever thing from here on out. Yeah. Like we will grow to be old men in this village. Like, ah, man, come to Larry. And like, like they don't resolve anything. No. Like, the movie ends on like a really bitter. I don't even know if bittersweet is the moment. Some or words. No, so much bitter. Just bitter, but like, tone. yeah, like depressing, depressing. Yeah. It, yeah. There is no happy ending. Cause he tries to burn down his house. He does. I mean, burn he down, does house. Burn down he says, his house. He's like, he's like, I don't care who's in it or whatever. Tomorrow I'm coming to burn your house at two o'clock. Make sure the dog's outside. Yeah. <laughs> Which is one of the best parts because after he comes back and he, he sees that, you know, Brendan Gleason is alive, he's like, he's like, thanks for taking care of my dog. <laughs> but you see Brendan Gleason in the house while it's burning. Yes. So at first you're like, oh yeah. shit. So he's gonna burn alive. You're like, why isn't he leaving? But obviously he had he had a way out. Yeah. And then he says, Thanks for taking care of my dog. And then Colin Farrell goes, Anytime. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, that's the last line yeah, that's of the, the movie. That's the last line right? of the movie. That's, Dude, like, that's, what, that's what would play out if we had a blood feud, you yeah. know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like almost like that, that part in Curb Your Enthusiasm where he's like, Fuck you, and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like we would be like smoking a blunt, watching your house burn. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know? How do you guys interpret? So, like, Jenny dies because she eats and chokes on. The fingers. The fingers of Colm. Colm's yeah. That he had cut off and threw. He cuts off all the rest of his fingers in the last act of the movie and throws it at Colin Farrell's door. Yeah. De- insanity. Insanity. Yeah, it's insane because this guy's whole thing is that he he's like, I'm not going to be your friend anymore, dude. Like, I need to make something of my life. I'm going to make a great song. I'm going to be a good fiddle player. And it seems like he's a great fiddle player and he's doing it. But, like, losing his hand is... Losing his fingers, it's like, how is he going to play? Like, he's just... It's crazy. Yeah. Insane. It is crazy. It's his livelihood. The sister even points that out to him. 
She's like, Why yeah, the are shot you? when he's walking past them with oh, no fingers no left, finger, just like that yeah. knuckle and bleeding. Yeah, and it seems like he looks paler. I don't know if that's just because that dude is that pale, but it a, seemed he's like a pale Irish actor. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> Brendan Gleeson. I know there's an alternate universe where we talked about him for a little while, but he killed it in Paddington too. He, God, <laughs> <laughs> he did. Or Mad Eye Moody. Yeah, but Paddington, Paddington too. Two is where he really shot. Fuck that movie. <laughs> 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 Who would you cast Brendan Gleeson as in the MCU or as a villain in the Batman movie to play off of the Penguin? Ooh, hmm. Brendan Gleeson is Hugo Strange. Ooh, I don't know if I can see this. Yeah, with the glasses. Yeah, shave his head. Hell Brandon, yeah, he's he like could, a ooh. big, heavy, tall guy. Yeah, Hugo Strange is kind of big. I would say Hugo Strange yeah, is Hugo not like Str- a fighter, but yeah, no, he's not like a petite. He's like also notoriously bald. My mind already goes to other bald actors before I go to Brendan Gleeson. But anybody, like we've said this before, when I've like we've if tried Colin to cast Farrell opposite, could anybody, be the yeah. Penguin. <laughs> <laughs> If Jesse Eisenberg could play a bald character, yeah. <laughs> anybody can. No, I just, I, I don't picture it, but, you know, if you guys want to do shitty castings, I do. Okay, then, then who, 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 who would you give him? Yeah. I liked Cody's Hugo Strange. So, so we're going like, you're allowed to do makeup and prosthetics or whatever. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he's in the Batman. Uh... He's also just fat, you guys. He's like a fat actor, I feel like. You can't hide that mm. under prosthetics. I'm not trying to. He's not. Yeah, he's not going to be like a ripped dude. He's, he, he's not fat like that. I'm saying he, he's a big build. I guarantee you that guy's like six four. Like he's he's an older big man. He's like in his late sixties or seventies. So who are you casting him as? Who are you casting him as? Yeah, oh, I I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> After all that, I just don't see him as Hugo Strange, Carmine Falcone. No, I would say. Like, oh yeah, yeah, like a mafia dude. That makes sense. I'd want to give him like Clayface, honestly. Ooh. Okay, there we go. That I think that that works. I would yeah. He could play a tragic actor. Hell yeah. yeah. Let him play a tragic character. Yeah. Okay, that works. And now how we want to interpret Clayface is totally up to whoever. Like, is he in fact the animated pile of like giant big pile of mud? Is it more like a, does this guy wear disguises? Yeah, like I could see his face melting with CGI or something yeah, like, like that. Yeah. Like not melting, but like becoming the clay. Yeah, so. Yeah. Okay. I like yours better. <laughs> Cody, Hugo Strange, no. I think it still works, even though yeah. Jake was like, fuck I that. do like it, no, too. I think it still I wasn't fuck that. I just don't see it. You guys I like it too. exaggerate my emotions during every <laughs> recording, so much so that Anthony, even t- when we talked on the phone earlier in the week, you were like, oh, yeah, it doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> no, Jake is a monster, and he yeah. always bullies us. Yeah. Who would you guys think I am in the in the Batman villain universe? Clayface. <laughs> Clayface. <laughs> You're the Clayface? No. You're the Penguin. Damn, Penguin? No. Mad Hatter. No. Mad Hatter. <laughs> really, he's like a pedophile. The pe- <laughs> the, the pe- <laughs> but why not the Penguin? I feel like the Penguin's like the a G. Like He's a guy that will shoot you. He's a guy that's running the casinos. You love going to Vegas. Like... You love, I feel like I love I don't know, like, Vegas. I've been there twice. Uh, th- that's that counts as love to me, man. <laughs> I would say more, like I'm a two face kind of character. Ooh, a Harvey Dent, yeah. okay, yeah. Like, you know I what? started okay, on the right works. path, but then something tragic happened to me and I went down a darker one. <laughs> <laughs> you still have that goodness in you, it's but you the- got that, <sighs> that two face. <laughs> <in you. Yeah. laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I respect that. We know I'm the Riddler. That's never going to (laughs) change. Who would I be? Mm. I feel like, you know, as uh, you could be Clayface. Mm, I don't know if I'd be Clayface. Sure. I don't know if I see him as Clayface. Who would Cody Cannon be? He's also Nora Freeze. We've said that. (laughs) Okay, what about, and he's he's a relatively newer villain, uh, Mr. Pig. I don't know, Mister Pig. Oh, Professor Pig. Professor Pig. I don't know, Professor Pig. He's too. Professor Pig's too insane. Like, I mean, Cody's crazy, but he's not <laughs> Professor Pig. Well, also with the pink ears right now, it looks like Professor <laughs> Pig's mask. <laughs> I see that. I don't know. Maybe you're. Maybe you're just not a villain. A villain. Yeah. I don't think I. I can see you more like a Harvey Bullock type character. Ooh. Yeah, I can see that. But I'm not a cop. That's <laughs> yeah, true. No one wants to be a cop on here. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> we refuse. 
Wait, are you are you guys drinking beer too? Yeah, yeah. I'm drinking Modelo, fool. Dude, I'm at <laughs> a Miller High Life 40, baby. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. I want to so, go hit the the bong real quick. I'll be back in one second. Dude, do that shit, Cody. Let's uh, let's talk some let's, let's talk some banshees since yeah, you know, we we recognize what's up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but yeah, dude, loved the movie. Um, you feel it's one of those movies where, other than the sister, who kind of is the only person who really has a happy ending, you feel bad for every single person in the movie. Yeah, no, yeah, I agree. At the end, I like, also, also feel like, dude, I felt bad. Like when I was watching it, I was like, wow, they really only have the pub i was like what is everyone's job do, like do they work like what do they do you know what i mean like how do people survive on that island farming and stuff like what's his name colin farrell was a farmer like, who do they sell yeah they sell to each other yeah they literally just trade back and forth yeah you're right yeah i that's like a lot of the, for some reason i was just spent on like a more like anthropological like when i was watching it i was like how does this town work or whatever there's one policeman on the island. Yeah. Like, and he's a monster. And he's a monster. You have that store with the nosy lady who like literally read Siobhan's mail. I'd be like, bitch, can you not fucking open my letters? Dude, I would if I dude, I would would have fought her that old lady. I mean, yeah. You know, yeah, fuck that old lady. Yeah, she was so annoying. She was a bitch. I want her to die. Yeah, dude. Should have been <laughs> justice for Dominic. You, you, you know these Irish. Though. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to tell you guys. <laughs> the Irish cannot be trusted. Sorry. <laughs> so I hit, so <laughs> they can't be. Uh, so I hit the bong and I was thinking uh, Siobhan as either uh, Poison Ivy or Phantasm. Ooh, I like. Both. I like her more. As, I like her more as Ivy. Yeah. Yeah. When I hit the bong, I was like Siobhan as Poison Ivy. Yeah, that would be sick. I like. It makes sense. Just because so many characters in this movie, I'm sorry, are Batman villains, so I, I yeah. figure we and can cast Barry him. Keegan as fucking Joker. As Joker, Joker, yeah. Which I'm still intrigued to see how that turns out. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the fence. Yeah, like I wouldn't naturally cast him as that. I'm on the fence too. Agreed. I'm on the fence in a weird way. Ooh. It's because he's not that tall. <laughs> Short Joker. Barry Keegan work. is not. He he's not a tall actor. Dude, well, but what I'm saying is, as a short person, you should give the man a chance. Well, I don't consider myself <laughs> short. You're short, dude. Really? 5'8 is short? Yeah. I don't agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, well, I, I don't matter. Like, I'm just saying. Like, I the brakes, kid. <laughs> I don't, I've never felt those brakes, dog. These things, I've been, all, my, I cut my brakes a long time ago. Dog. You want to know something? You want to know why? <laughs> you want to know why? I cut Jay? my brakes a long time ago. <laughs> you want to know why? Uh, because your personality makes you larger than life. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good saying, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. you are short. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've never really felt it uh, hold me back or whatever. Yeah, wow. Well, so. It has. <laughs> <laughs> How short is uh, Brian Michael Key or whatever? <laughs> Who is Brian Michael Key? He's a mix, he's a mix, of, <laughs> he's a mix of Keegan Michael Key and Barry Keegan. <laughs> oh man, when Jake said 5'8 is short, I should have won. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh <wow>. that's great! <laughs> I said Brian Michael Key. Brian, Brian Michael, Michael Key. Key. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> How short is he, though? I don't know. Well, then, How short is he? Look at my. Look it up, somebody. We're gonna do it right now. How short is Brian Michael Key? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know who we should ask. What I know who we should ask. Oh, the chron chronic Tron or whatever. Chronic, Chron chronic Jarvis. <laughs> chronic, <laughs> chronic Jarvis. We got to ask Chronic yeah, Jarvis for this information. <laughs> chronic Jarvis. Uh, we we need to know how tall is Barry Keegan. Barry Keegan is five foot seven inches. So Jake's taller than that little Hobbit bitch. <laughs> <laughs> there we go there we go thank you chronic jarvis whoa did you t how did you do that that's actually impressive <laughs> <laughs> he did it before <laughs> oh yeah, yeah sorry <laughs> that was actually impressive 
Dude, I'm impressive. You don't have to say actually. I, I'm I'm an impressive person. Okay. He built Chronic Jarvis. I know. Like that's the impressive part, not the he me activating him and asking him a question. Dude, I had I had you know like in Home Alone, Kevin had one of those like walkie talkie things, yeah. and then you could buy. I had one of those, dude. So I, I fucking he's been, have. Tech. He's been at this since back way back. Yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> I could put record things on cassette. You wouldn't believe, bro. Dude, I have some tapes. I have some VHSs of my life. <laughs> I have some tapes. That sounds <laughs> ominous. <laughs> I have some tapes. Hey, I dude, I have some tapes. tapes. <laughs> you want really, really crazy shit? <laughs> I got the tapes. Dude, I can, Jake, I can see you selling snuff films. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> Look that. Well, yeah, they're probably Anthony snuff films. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. So you have snuff films of me? How does it? No, right. Anthony dies in the multi. Jake's going around the multiverse <laughs> videoing always. Anthony dies. <laughs> Ooh. That sounds like an interesting story. Yeah. Jake's the villain of the podcast, so it makes sense. Dude, no, we debunked that a long time ago. <laughs> it's through your manipulation and edits. <laughs> I don't manipulate anything, man. You guys remember this guy named. An ACI. Of course. So he would always like try to be my friend and uh he was kind of annoying. Was he the young kid? Yeah, he he was a, he was the kid we called Prague, which I feel bad about now. <laughs> <laughs> he called what? Me and Cody kept calling him Prague from Oz. What does that mean? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a prison term for like bitch, meaning you got raped. <laughs> I forgot about that. Holy shit, shit. Dude, I remember doing it for a minute and I was like, damn, I should probably stop doing that. <laughs> he was definitely like lowest on the pecking order for sure. Even below Sam Cohen somehow. He was also, yeah. he was also that kid was young. I think he was like an actual kid. Yeah. He, yeah, he, he, really young. he became 18 while in the class. Yeah. Either 18 or 19, but that was it. Yeah. But he was super nice. The thing was, he was, nice he was just super unfunny. I thought at least he was. like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, edit his like, name out of this, please. <laughs> maybe okay. Maybe edit out his last name. Okay, yeah. I don't have to say. <laughs> to just be like. <laughs> yeah, there you yeah. Go. <laughs> Look, I'm an agreeable person, right? I'm not going to be like fuck you. Like, even if I might think that, like, if you're talking to me, I'll, I'm going to be like uh, polite. I guess, like, you know, I'm just. I'll be annoyed, but I'll be polite, if, even if I don't want to talk to you. But like, he would just like always, just like never shut the fuck up, and I, I, I just didn't want to talk to him. Like, I just didn't give a fuck, and like I was there to like you know do the comedy, and he wasn't even funny, so it wasn't fun to talk to him. Like, he was a dull person, like you know, in that Ooh. sense. So like, I really like tried to ghost this guy too, like, but like we were you know all in that same small class. But like, I kind of felt bad for him. I would never say like this kind of shit to his face. I wouldn't be like, <laughs> you're not a funny guy. You know? Like, who the fuck am I? <laughs> Seriously, like who the fuck am I to say that anyway? I just didn't think he was funny. I thought you guys were funny, and here we are doing a podcast. Where's where's he's not here? So like, fuck him. <laughs> but I guess what I'm trying to say is like, um, even though that was the case, I remember when we did the final show, and um, he didn't have any sketches in it, even though everyone kind of got something in there. And he was like kind of bummed out about it. And he's like, yeah, you know, I went to Steve Rosenfield and he's like, yeah, I'm not doing, putting any of your sketches in. And I thought that was kind of very unfair. And I said this to both of them and I was like, you like you paid for the class just as much as anyone else. There's no reason, you know, cause, and I said this because I had like three or four sketches in the final thing. And I was like, that's fucking awesome. And I'm confident enough that you deserve it. I felt like I deserved it, yes, but I, 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 I wasn't like an egomaniacal person about it. Like, I was like, he could have a sketch in there. You know what I mean? Like, and I felt really bad and I want to stay on quality shows. Sorry. <laughs> Anthony, no, he, here's the question I have for you. Sure. <laughs> Would you have cut off your fingers to get him to leave you alone? <laughs> 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 well, he eventually unfriended me on Facebook, so I didn't he need to. He unfriended you? Yeah, he unfriended me. I think he got the hint. <laughs> nice. he was like, yeah. Maybe I might have said, like, dude, you're not funny. Leave me alone. I might have said Damn. that at some point. Anthony, Anthony brutal. Anthony. That was in my dark period. Negative I'm sorry. energy. Anthony, yeah. coming back as the villain. See, he's always been the villain. All right. If you're listening, I, I, that was my brutal, honest take. I hope you're a good comedian now and more <laughs> successful than me. I mean, we can look at that <laughs> up right now. <laughs> <laughs>
No, but yeah. That kid, he, he was just there. I don't have beef with him, you know? I just, Sounds like you do. <laughs> but you, what? You guys fucking, at least I didn't call him prison bitch or whatever you guys are called. Yeah, dude. It sounds like, the, you sound, you sound a lot like calm right now. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah, you see, that's why I brought that story. Man. Yeah. It's an honest story. I'm not proud of it. But I said I tried to do something nice for him. That You get what I'm saying? I, I told Steve Rosenfield, like, put one of his sketches in. And he was like, no, I'm not doing like, that. crazy. I was like, all right. <laughs> like, fuck. Damn. Well, that's, that's nice of you. That was noble. Noble. I thought it was the right thing to do, honestly. I'm not trying to even, you know, it is what it is. The right thing to do is not what's going to get you ahead. <laughs> you need to be willing to cut off people and even kill. <laughs> I was willing my sketches are like my fingers. I was going to cut off one of my sketches. I like how I like how neither of them were willing to kill each other though. Yeah. They want to go that far, yeah. Well, they like yeah, they both kind of like they like teetered on it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I I agree throughout the whole movie, the tone of them like like, dude, are these two men going to fucking murder each other? It was like ever present. Yeah. yeah. You didn't know if it was going to actually. And you get that old lady who's like saying there's going to be two deaths by like the end of the whatever. She had a crazy old crone. Yeah, yeah, but she's like a witch. and I liked her. She was creepy. Doesn't she like prophesy shit? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm she, saying. She says there's going to be two saying. deaths. Yeah, she says there's going to be oh, yeah. two deaths on the island. But the two deaths are Dominic and, and the donkey and Jenny. Jenny, yeah, donkey. Dude, Jenny was a person. Jenny was one of the best characters in the movie. Jenny from the block, dude. Yeah. Well, look, they. She doesn't say two people are gonna die or two humans are gonna die. She, she specifically says two, says two deaths. deaths. So that, like, Jenny, and and I think that gives weight and signif- even more significance to Jenny's death. Like you're saying, she was a person. Yeah, it mattered that she died. It affected uh, Podrick. You know, he he lost was, like, that. Fight. He f- snapped. People yeah. even, he literally like, apologized was, to Podrick. Like even John Joe at the pub, he was like, "I'm sorry about your donkey." And then like, yeah, like they knew that motherfucker loved Jenny. <laughs> that was sad. Yeah, dude, I'd burn your house down, bro, for a donkey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. my for my emotional support donkey. Fuck yeah. Yeah, it was his friend. It was not even like a pet. It was like his friend. Yeah, it was like one of the only things he had to hold on to. Honestly. Yeah. And I, earlier you were saying like they were like, I don't think, think they were best friends. I just think they literally drank a pint together every day. Like, and, and that's all it was even to calm. Like, no, know, they was, were, that was, they were, they were clearly best friends. I think like even the sister and people like suggested at the beginning, they were, when they're they like, were weirded out that calm some Larry called off their friendship out of the blue. Everyone in town was like, what the hell is Everyone he on? in town was like, what are you doing? Yeah. Oh, see, see, I thought like, even if that's the case, I, I just, I, I guess I just thought like their friendship was just that. And then not that that could just be a friendship, you know, like every day they meet for a beer, like, the, you know, that's a lot, that's a lot more than a lot of people meet their best friends. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like every day at two o'clock, he'd knock on his door and they walk to the pub and get a beer. Yeah. But I'm saying it didn't seem like they did much else. Uh, I do got to say if that, if Jake and I ever did, it would be Jake who would be the one that would call off the friendship. That's what I'm saying. He's calm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he said that, I'm, I'm calm somebody. We didn't even have to say it out loud. Like we knew it was out loud. Like, we did say it out loud, yeah. but we knew. We yeah, knew. Yeah. Because, Cody, you're way too nice. Like, you're the niceness. And if you were like, oh. and if I'm Dominic in the situation, right, and you were just like to me, yeah, I did something really, really fucking mean, I'd be like, damn, like, that's not what Cody would do. What happened to Cody? Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> See, Fuck but it wouldn't really happen only because, like, whereas, like, comes from there, he got tired of Con Farrell's, like, dull speak. Like, when me and Cody hang out for long enough, we both say nonsense. Yeah, we, <laughs> like utter we dumb shit. Like sometimes gibberish. Like, yeah, like sometimes literally like poo poo shit shit. Like what was like, dude? Like, that, like <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you it get takes. Dumber, like, I feel like yeah, like so your relationship is more like the lighthouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah we <laughs> descend into madness yeah, over time. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we resort to our baser selves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you guys think that you could survive in that time period in 1923 ireland on that do you mean like on that specific island hell no i'd be too depressed that place looks like you'd have to get off to like live life yeah i'd have drank myself to death you know (laughs) right i mean if we had weed i'd be okay i don't know they didn't they didn't they didn't 
Yeah, they were poor people, man. Yeah, they didn't. They were. Well, I bring weed from the future. They wore the same clothes every day, literally, which I thought was like a yeah. cool detail. Like, Colin Farrell's character wears the same shirt and everything every day. Mm-hmm. But, like, you saw in the background there, again, there was, like, that island, yes, it was dull. Like, the, it was dull, like you guys are saying. It's just, like, how could you live there? But, like, like, topographically, it was beautiful. But, but it was a, It was beautiful in that way, but also there was this peaceful dullness to it because you saw in the distance... Throughout the movie, the bombs going, Ooh, you know, man. the war happening. You're right. Maybe you know, they, so like they had safety there, even in the dullness. So Ooh. I would, I think, you know what? I'm the kind of person that would trade safety dullness for excitement, danger. Not me, you're, speaking, buddy. You're, speaking, you're speaking some profound things. Are you saying that there is a certain degree of safety in dullness? Absolutely. Security? Hell yes. Ooh. Hell yes. I think you're right. Give me the danger, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it's any better than excitement danger because excitement's not bad. Excitement's great. You know, like dullness isn't good, but safety's good. Danger's bad, obviously. But but I'm just, that's how I feel about it. But danger is also where there's opportunity. Siobhan literally leaves this dull, safe place. Right, of course. To go out into a war-torn Europe and Ireland. Yeah. Ireland. Right. It's worth it. It's Mainland. worth it to go out into the world yeah. of danger and excitement. Absolutely. I, I'm with Siobhan. I would have I would have left that motherfucking island. Same man. Yeah. Yeah. No exaggeration. Me leaving the island in my real life is is going to ACI, even though it's not leaving anywhere. Like you guys literally, Ooh. well, not Jake. Like Jake's New Rochelle, I'm the Bronx. Cody went states away, you know, like you and but Cody, you're not that kind of person either. You've left you're, I'd you're be leaving. Man, you know? Yeah, I'm a, yeah. <laughs> I'm a man of the road. I'm a road yeah. dog. I yeah. left. I left New York. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You're in LA now. Absolutely. Takes Three thousand know? miles away. Yeah. Dedicated three thousand miles to the, to the brand. Have to you guys brand. Have you guys seen the movie Three Thousand Miles to Graceland? No. No. Do you know you what know I'm why. talking about? Come on. Yeah, it's an I Elvis movie, so. right? No, it's a heist but movie. They like all dress movie. like yeah, Elvis. Oh. <laughs> it sounds like Wait, is that with Kevin Costner? I think it might be Kurt Russell, or but it might be Kevin them? Costner. It might be both of them. <gasps> you, don't you dare say that. It is Kurt Russell and Kevin Costner oh, and Courtney Cox them. and David, yeah, Arcade, David Arcade and Christian Slater Christian and Slater. Thomas Hayden Church Dude, it's a and Kevin Pollock. It's a banger. Oh my God. And Ice T. We and should do an episode long. about 3,000 miles love to Graceland. Do <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Star-studded cast right here. Yeah, man. La creme de la creme, you know? <laughs> the no creme way. de la creme. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually pretty epic. I can't believe it's both of them. Legends. Yeah. <laughs> Legends. Kevin Costner. <laughs> So, who do you? What, how many Joe Peasies, guys? Oh, let's go. We're at the Joe Peasy Nexus, dude. I'm not letting you haters. I already know it's not going to get what I think it deserves. So, from you guys, <laughs> I'm, I'm giving it a six. Easy money, honestly. Six easy money. Six easy money. Six. <laughs> um, I'm not going to give it a six. <laughs> I knew you weren't. Yeah, we we both knew you weren't. I'm going to give it a. Five, Five point, point nine. nine. <laughs> Dude, I would kill you, Dad. <laughs> so is that really what you're giving it? Yeah, five point nine. Oh, you're a scoundrel! <laughs> what a dirty dog. <laughs> <laughs> we should find it. <laughs> Anthony is the villain. I told you. <laughs> this week I am. Damn, that's, that's What's dirty. The, why not the six? Yeah, what are you de- mm. detracting? Where? What are your? Is that like good writing or good films or anything, Anthony? <laughs> Listen, have you guys seen a movie called Armageddon by director Michael? Yeah. <laughs> 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 if you have, you'll know what I mean. Yeah, what yeah. makes a six? <laughs> no, for real, what's your what's your reason? It it just wasn't a six for me. It's just like wild. It's, that's wild. It's not like, like okay because I think I would give In Bruges a six, easy six. That's actually easy six. Like that was like to me a movie that I enjoyed. I enjoyed. There's really nothing I don't like about this movie. It was just not my one of my favorites. Like I think seeing it once is fine. Like. But it was great, you know. Like, did you like Fableman's better than this? Oh, I'm actually thrilled to watch it again. Same with you, Cody. I'm actually going to go watch it tonight. 
I'm going to watch it on like Monday or Tuesday. My boy has put in nice. a projector, so we're going to watch it tonight. Because I was going to say, so like I, I'm, I, so I'm thinking about like movies that I liked in 2022, right? Yeah. Like, what are your top movies? Prey. I really liked Prey. Wow. Like, Prey's got to be in my nice. top five. I really liked Prey. I felt like it really should have been in the movie theaters. Yeah. I agree. I do agree with that. It should have been in the movie theaters. Yeah, I'm not saying it's my top one, but it's in my top five. Another one, like, and I literally watched this movie like two days in a row. The weird, the Al Yankovic story. I love that movie so fucking much. We were talking about um, in another episode how like they don't make a lot of comedies anymore. And this was a fucking, it was, it reminded me of like balls to the wall comedy. Yeah, exactly. I was like, damn it. I want more of this. Like Daniel Radcliffe fucking kills it. It's just a funny movie. I, I just really enjoyed it. So funny. I haven't seen it. And, and so like, that's gotta be in my top five. I liked, I haven't seen Pearl, but X X was a really good horror movie. Do you like X more than Banshees? More than Banshees? Probably, yeah. It was a Whoa. really cool... I liked it. What's X? What's X? It's a A24 slasher. It's really good, but I wouldn't put it... It doesn't even come close to Banshees. Is that the torn uh, one in the barn? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I heard that movie was whack. I liked it a lot. I didn't uh, see it. I, I wouldn't it. go as I wouldn't go as far to say it's whack. It's actually yeah. a great movie, Is it? but yeah, I loved it. Is it on barbarian level? It's uh, it's not quite barbarian, but it's close. <laughs> yeah, I probably like barbarian. The barbarians, another one I really liked. I really like Terrifier too. That's Terrifier not a joke. two is incredible. It's, I liked it a lot. <laughs> Terrifier it's 2 is really funny. fucking brutal. It's the most yeah. brutal movie of the year, bar none. Yeah, oh yeah. No other movie comes close to that. And then, Jake, you're not going to like this, but Nope, I really like. Ooh, nope is up dog, there for me. Nope is not making yeah. any numbers that's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, on the, I'm in Jake's. I actually watched Nope for the first time recently and just was like, it's like, yeah, like it's not even that it's like, meh. wow, a lot of no paid on the podcast. Yeah, it's not it's bad. Like, I liked it. I liked, I liked honestly, uh, my, <laughs> but the thing, my favorite things about Nope were just that it was homages to Spielberg and Hitchcock, not that it was like standing on its own two feet. You know what I mean? Like it was just fine. If we're talking about beautifully shot movie, that's there. Dude, fuck that stupid air balloon monster and nope. That shit was wild. Mm, nah, I, I love oh, it. It's, it's a kite alien. Hiding in a cloud. <laughs> yeah, gay. <laughs> nah, that's awesome. And, and then the way, like there was like, the, there was once, there's a couple scenes in the movie that are just some of the most terrifying scenes like for a horror movie this year, like Ooh. just seeing a, a chimpanzee go buck wild is insane. Like it's just, they do it really well. It feels scary. That was the best part of the entire movie. Agreed. Well, there's that. Yeah. And then there's a scene where you see like the alien digesting people and you hear it and it's terrifying. It's like, a, it's not a long scene, but just the, vo the sounds you hear. Just it sounds like people getting digested and it's terrifying. It, the, I don't know. The movie is just the movie's wag. The movie's trash. It's I trash. liked it a lot. Like, don't sleep on no. Sleep, nah, sleep, it was not, not trash. Not only sleep on it, but fluff it up first, dude. Then, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm definitely in between you guys in that I neither loved it nor hated it. That it was just like a movie. I I, I don't hate it. It just wasn't like good. <laughs> See, I wouldn't even say that. I'd say it's fine. Or you know what? I would actually. That, that, I'll be, yeah, I thought it was. Cool. I would say the best things about it are the monkey, the chimpanzee, Stephen Yen's character, and oh yeah, like, uh, Stephen Yen's character was more compelling than anyone else's. But they like killed him off, and it's Kiki Palmer. Come on, she was great. Yeah, but like I'm, I just found Stephen Yen's backstory with it opens with the chimp scene. I thought like that he should have been the main character of the movie. Mm, he's kind of like the villain in some ways. No, I didn't see this. That he does some. Know. He does some shit. But there's also a bunch of movies this year I haven't seen. You know, I never saw. Was The Northman a 2022 movie? A24? I think it might have been end of 2021. No, it was, I think mm. it was 2022. Interesting. The North you know, I didn't see Jurassic World Dominion. <laughs> 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 uh, Jake, so what would you put as your favorite movies of last year? Of 2022? What are we going up to? Three or five or what? Just whatever feels right. As you want. Yeah. yeah, I didn't really. I just okay. threw out some movies we didn't really talk about. In no crazy order? Yeah. Like in no order. Banshees, easily. I'll be honest. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah, those are the top two for me. That's not even oh, a yeah, question. Oh, that was great. Um, those two banshees and everything everywhere are my two favorite for sure. What else came out this year? 
the Batman, I guess. Yeah, Batman's up there. Um, what else was there? Terrifier two for I re- me. I didn't see. I didn't see that. Barbarian is up there. I really liked Barbarian. That was a pleasant surprise. What else, did I, dude? I loved people. I loved Bullet Train. I like, dude. I just, uh, I just watched that last night. I didn't see that, and I didn't want to see it. Like, well, I remember seeing the trailers <laughs> for it in theaters. I was like, this looks fucking stupid. And uh, dude, I literally watched it last night. It was a fun movie. <laughs> yeah, it had the same energy as like those like heist action movies that were like really popular in the mid two thousands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but with like, I, don't know, I thought it was, it was funny. I liked Iron Taylor Johnson's character and uh, uh, his brother Ryan Tyree. What's his name? Yeah, yeah. So I like yeah. it too. I don't. I'm not. You guys think it. I should watch it? Uh, also, uh, Glass Onion. I really liked. Yeah, I did, honestly me overrated. Really? I'll say Glass Onion and Nope were the two single most overrated movies of the year. Whoa, you're putting Glass Onion with Nope in the same range? Yeah, Dude, probably. That, that is, I need to see Glass Onion. That is a hard cap and a half. Like, well, <laughs> I liked Nope more than you did. <laughs> Um, that's something that was fun. I thought that was also just a fun movie. It was very entertaining. Was, uh, Janelle Monet was the best part by far. Oh, I disagree. I mean, she was awesome. She was amazing. I loved her. She's beautiful. But uh, Daniel Craig, man, he gets to chew up that scenery. Yeah. <laughs> chew it up. Oh, the menu was good. I guess that's a 2022 movie. I, didn't see the menu. I, I liked it. I wouldn't put it in my tops, though. Not in my top, but I liked it. It's fun to watch. I, I would definitely recommend it to watch it. My best were definitely Banshees and Everything Everywhere, though. Like those, like those two were kind of stood leagues above everything else. Mm. They get like Joe Pesci six with a star. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Banshees, in, Banshees in my top five easily. No, Joe Pesci six with a. Uh, <laughs> those movies, those movies uh, make Cody. <laughs> it's true. I think coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else came out this year? Dude, I'm being high and having a hard time yeah. thinking of it too. Black Adam, Thor: Love and Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Neither of those make it to mine. Yeah, of course not. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, The Fablemans. Fablemans, I liked. I actually had a, I had a hard time with Pinocchio. Yeah, it wasn't. I didn't like it too much. I did too because I ate a mushroom. <laughs> 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 and uh, I didn't even like, I, like I wasn't tripping hard, but I was like for sure seeing shit. And dude, I'm not gonna lie, like I was just sitting there and I was like, "Ooh, it's hard to watch." Like he was fucking uh, <laughs> on the shrooms, like Geppetto's face. I just it was, it was. I turned it off. I was like, I can't do this right now. <laughs> I put on BoJack to like comfort me. Nice. I get it, Jake. You hate stories about Italian characters. It's fun. I just don't like guineas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wait! I would just like oh. to point out over the course of like this episode and the other one, I was like, yeah, you know, can't trust Irishmen. And then the other one, was like, yeah, you can't trust the Chinese. And then I was like, you know, I don't like Italians. <laughs> so Jake's a racist, yeah. but I'm a, but I'm an equal opportunity. <laughs> the key is to hate everyone equally. Yeah, except for the Jewish. No, yeah, we've heard too. that, Alex Jones. Hate them too. Alex Jones never said that. <laughs> also, what, how do you? What do you listen to him all the time? How would you know? How would you know what he says? <laughs> You've shown me clips of him. I've showed you clips of him. Oh, who? <laughs> you always send me Alex. Jake is uh, a huge Alex I've Jones. I've never fan. sent you clips of Alex Jones. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, Alex Ross. Alex Ross. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> On Alex Jones. Well, I think that about does it. I'm running out of energy. I'll be honest. Well, that's it, boys. That's it. No, I'm over it. <laughs> yeah, we're I'm done. I'm on Steam. We're done. We went above and beyond. We're chopping our fingers off. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Like all our social medias, Comics and Chronic. Yeah, if you don't listen to this podcast, we will chop our fingers off. Yep. <laughs> we're going to start with our dicks, actually. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't know about you guys. Yeah, but I'm like, speak for <laughs> yourself, buddy. Yeah, what? I can still come mm. with no fingers, you know? <laughs> 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 All right, that's it, boys. It'd be hilarious if we call this episode, I could still come with no fingers. <laughs> <laughs> that <would be> funny. <laughs> like, like the banshees of whatever uh, the banshees of Ed Sheeran 
Hi, you're listening to Comics and Chronic, and I'm Jacob H. I'm Cody Cannon. And I'm Anthony Iannaccio. And you can tune in every Thursday to hear new episodes of Comics and Chronic. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at Comics and Chronic. That's Comics, the letter N, Chronic. We'll see you guys next week. Woo! Peace.